Please welcome an Emmy, Golden Globe, and Screen Actors Guild Award winner, and one of the stars of the hit comedy series, 30 Rock, Mr. Alec Baldwin. Thank you, um, and congratulations to Bibi. Where are you, Bibi? She, there you are, congratulations to Bibi. Um, I remember a few years ago, I sent a letter to Paul Newman and to Joanne Woodward, and I said, uh, would you be the honorees at an event for an organization I work with? And I got a letter back from Newman that said, thank you, but my wife and I would like to respectfully decline. We don't like to make a habit of uh, doing that kind of thing. He said, for fear of catching the dreaded honoria. <laughs> and something tells me that tonight's remaining honoree is of the same school. He would rather act and let the acting speak for itself and not uh, um, get into a lot of uh, um, awards and presentations and so forth. I'm sure he's writhing in agony right now. But I remember uh, back in 1994, I was uh, working in Los Angeles and a guy that was my assistant, uh, um, the head of NYU was on a fundraising tour to LA, came to my office, asked me for mon money, and the kid that was in my office at the time, who was this very clever kid, said, uh, uh, we gotta go outside, I gotta have you sign that thing. I said, what thing? He said, we gotta sign that thing. And we go outside, and he says, get the degree. I go, what? He goes, they're asking you for money. Tell them you want the degree. <laughs> and I go, oh my God, this kid's a genius, because I didn't finish. I had a year to go. I walked back, Oppenheim was the dean of NYU, then I go, well, I would like you to maybe help me to facilitate me getting my degree. I don't want an honorary degree, but I'd like to get my degree. And he was like, well, all right, Mr. Baldwin, we'll see what we can do about that. <laughs> And the next thing you know, I'm in an office with a guy and we devised this thing where I'm going to pick an actor, because I had gone to Strasbourg through NYU, we're gonna pick an actor and we're gonna discuss the applicability of method acting to the technique of, a, of an actor who does both stage and film. The applicability of method acting of Stanislavski and Strasbourg's techniques to an, a career in stage and film. And there was only one person that you could do this with. There was only one. So I approached this person and I said, would you let me, I watched all his films and I read all these books that Stanislavski wrote and all these books that Strasbourg wrote. We had agreed that I wouldn't publish the paper so I can't share it with you. And I wrote this as a thesis for school. I had 225 questions. And, and again, this is a person who, he would rather just do the acting, he doesn't really want to talk about acting, you know. But if there were five things he said to me that were really, I mean, there are many anecdotes, but if there were five things he said to me, I mean, they changed my life. This is back in 1994. They were so powerful, his observations about what he does and why he does it, and he, and he doesn't like to discuss that. Like, I remember, just as an aside, I said to him, now, in your filmography, you do the movie Cruisin' with Billy Friedkin, very controversial film, and I said, and you're in a bar, and people are having all this kind of crazy gay sex with each other, and it's this really dark film, and people are getting stabbed and getting murdered. I said, a couple months later, you do the movie Author, Author. <laughs> I said, what's that like for you to leap that chasm from like Billy Friedkin and violent homosexual sex, and then in the main title song of Author, Author, the song says, the lyrics say, and in the end, it's all just cookies and milk and a smile. I go, how do you go from one to the other? I said, you're doing a sex scene with Richard Cox where he's going down on you in Riverside Park. I said, what was that like for you? He literally says to me, he goes, all I remember was it was cold. <laughs> he, said, we were, he said, we were in Riverside Park and all I remember is it was so damn cold out there. I go, yeah, yeah, I get that. I said, well, what was it like for you to do a sex scene with another guy? It was so damn cold, Alec, I gotta tell you. We were there, Riverside Park, it was so cold. I just wanna say, for me, uh, this is a man who, John Randolph puts the shield on this guy's chest in Serpico and gives him his gold shield, and the tears just go rolling down my face every time. This is a guy who is, truly, one of the reasons I do this for a living. And this is a guy who, unlike other people in this business, who are great actors, who achieve great success, but then retreat into some kind of Howard Hughes-like, freaky, weird cocoon they live in. <laughs> this is a guy that was on Broadway this past season. This is a guy who is still 
putting it out there on the highest level. He's going to the park. He's doing Shakespeare. I'm in LA a couple years ago. He's doing Orphans with Jesse Eisenberg and Sean Hattesey in a room full of nine, you know, 99 people in a theater to go see him do the Lyle Kessler play. This is a guy who's doing movies. This is a guy that's doing, you know, knocking them on their ass in HBO films. And this is a guy that had this filmography and continues to have this filmography, which is one of the greatest careers in motion picture history. And he's still feels that he is an artist and he has to say what he wants to say through this thing that he does and no one does it better than he does. No one does it better than he does. So uh, please join me in welcoming someone who I believe is truly one of the greatest actors in the history of this country in film and television and theater. Please welcome Al Pacino. <laughs> I tell you, it just keeps getting crazier. Uh, I am shocked. I, what I'm really shocked at is uh, that all these people, these people who talked up here, just sort of really know what I'm going through. You know, it just kind of was shocking. And they were, in, a, in their own way, helping me to come up here and not know what I'm talking about. So I will try to somehow explain to you I didn't, I know this sounds as crazy as, as anything can be, but I, I'm overwhelmed by this, overwhelmed, let me tell you. I would be overwhelmed no matter what, but, but to, to be overwhelmed when you don't expect to be overwhelmed, because I didn't expect this to be like this. I was going to, the last time I got, I got a, I know I wasn't dreaming, this wasn't dreaming. I got a Lifetime Achievement Award, Lee Strasberg Lifetime Achievement Award, for the Actors Fund about 20 years ago. Now, I don't know, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, <clears throat> the thing was in a, it was in a lobby of some movie house or theater. I was standing there with a lot of people and somebody said, here's the award. I said, thank you very much. And I, I didn't hear anything about me other than I got the award. That's what I'm expecting. Can you believe this? I expected that tonight. But I'm very thrilled and overwhelmed and shocked and surprised because I didn't expect it to be a, a lifetime achievement and all these great people talking about me. I mean, all of them, you know, and there's Jeff Robinson coming out here and talking like that and Annette and Alec and Johnny Boy. Johnny. I just saw him the other day because us kids go to the same school. They're not my grandkids either. They might really. Okay. <laughs> now let me let me say something. I'm not going to be long. I mean, I can't, this was so beautiful to actually see the living examples of what the Actors Fund does. To see these kids up here ex express their their and you, Bibi. I mean, you told me I got to get a new hip instead of the part. I thought, what an excuse that is. Wow, <laughs> I never heard that one before. <laughs> now you got two of them. You know, I mean, holy smokes. I mean, good stuff, Phoebe. Good stuff. Congratulations to you. Lovely. And everything here tonight, so lovely, so amazing. I'm so scared and then not. You know, I'm in front of people. What the heck? I'm a, I'm a performer, right? What am I going to do? Uh, you know, because a lot of the times at the Actors Fund, it's so in, ensconced. It's so much there. You know, you don't, you take it for granted in a way. Because there's this wonderful thing that has been here for over a century, and, and you've got to keep fanning it. And tonight we are doing that, I guess. That's what's so wonderful about tonight. Um, I want to say, I, yeah, you know, the, the interesting thing about Lee Strasberg uh, and his, uh, the effect the Actors Fund had on Lee, because when I got in the Actors Studio, I was very young, and uh, I didn't have anything. I didn't have money for my rent. I didn't have phone. They used to have shoes there for people. Uh, they had this fund that Lee Strasberg set up so that 
he was inspired by the Actors Fund so that if you went in there, you could say, I, look, I don't have my rent. And the Actors Studio would come out and open a little box. You know, rent, wait a minute, I wasn't living in any high rises. You know, I was living in tenements, so it wasn't that much money. But they pull out 50 bucks for the rent. You don't believe me? <laughs> no. So anyway, uh, that's what would happen. And of course, we found out after a while that that went sort of dry, that that fund went dry, because actors from the actor's studio would give back when they made it. And they, they, it, they, it was the James Dean Memorial Fund. Then it became the Norman Ornelas Memorial Fund. And uh, it's been revived. But it was, it was inspired by the actor's fund. And uh, uh, just to say to Jeff, uh, who was talking about Scarface and talking about the lines, and he knows them, that it was Oliver Stone who wrote that script, by the way. And uh, it was really a beautiful, beautifully written script. And uh, it's, it's amazing how infectious those words are and how we, we think of words in the theater. <laughs> Thank you. We think of words in the theater, but also there are words in films, you know? It's, it's, it's something when you see a good movie, you, 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 you're interested in the dialogue between the, between the actors. And, uh, you know, because it is such a visual medium, it's such a motion picture, it's moving images, you know? But uh, uh, Oliver proved that you can have that and uh, have language sustain over 25 years. So I was very happy to hear that. I'm very happy to be here now that I'm up on the stage. I was terrified sitting there in that little thing, looking around, and then, and then I just love the love in this room and, I, and love up here to me. You know? <laughs> it's astounding. Uh, and and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful. And as I've said many times, uh, this this is 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 more than uh, I ever bargained for. This whole world of theater and acting that, that has happened to me—it's the most, you know, pinch me and wake me up because it's that for me, doing what I love to do. And I I I don't know except that Johnny Depp, who I love so much, he was a little off in his timing. Do not tell him. <laughs> he actually did it, he did it on the, not Johnny Carson, please. He was on the David Letterman show. And he said, Pacino has a joke, he tells me, that nobody gets. Did you get that joke? <laughs> but the timing of it, a skeleton walks into a bar <laughs> and says to the bartender, I'd like a beer and a mop. <laughs> it's in the time. Thank you for this glorious, glorious gift. Thank you all. Beautiful.